Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today is halfway through hashtag Art Journal Habit 2017. This is a, a month long art journaling challenge where I'm doing a page a day and a video a day as well as Peg Robinson is and then a lot of other people are following along and playing along and doing pages as well. Uh, the idea of it is to encourage you to do art journaling every day or in some type of creativity every day. It's good for your mind, it's good for your soul, it's good for your health. And of course, we want you to share your pages in Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group. You can ask to join that group. Um, remember to answer the questions at the beginning though, because a lot of people are not answering the questions. So I started out by just wing my junk journal page uh, the two pages are not the same size. This is something that happens in junk journals because you're just using junk to make your journal. That doesn't bother me. It's fine. Um, I adjusted them so that they would both be basically white and would cover up um, some of the ink that was on this junk mail. Then I used some Neo Color 2 crayons to color on some different colors of uh, blues, greens, aqua, type colors. The prompt today is fish and I have an idea already of what I'm going to do which has to do with my zodiac sign. I am uh, was born in March and my zodiac sign is Pisces and so I've been kind of looking into it lately. It's an it's interesting. Um, am I going to plan my life around my zodiac sign? No I'm not but <laughs> uh, you can read stuff about it. It's kind of interesting. So and surprisingly, I can find things that do match my personality in what they say. I'm not sure how that works. But anyway, um, after that, I went ahead and blended those Neo Color 2s with some matte medium, some fluid matte medium, so that it would make it a little bit more permanent because I knew I was going to be making more layers on the top. Then I used some different blues and aqua colors of my Marabou Art Sprays over the top of that using a stencil, uh, kind of a wavy stencil, and then uh, also just spraying and splattering and, you know, and there was a lot of drying involved. Obviously, I don't leave that in the video. You don't want to watch paint dry. <laughs> then I'm using some white acrylic paint to go through a stencil that has a few bubbles. There's a couple different stencils that have some kind of like bubbly, circly uh, patterns on them and I'm adding those to add some white back in because it seemed to be getting kind of dark. Um, the whole page was just looking rather dark and I'm just messing around. I mean I know I'm making kind of a watery background because obviously it's gonna have fish on it and fish live in the water. They don't really live out on the land. So <laughs> I know it's going to be a watery looking background, but I'm just kind of playing with different stuff. I get out a fine line uh, bottle with some fluid titanium white in it and I just draw some like some more wavy lines um, to bring some more white back in. Don't know why, just felt like doing that. Sometimes you just feel like doing that. It's it's intuition. Then I got some uh, high flow titanium white out and I'm making them some splatters with my fan brush. Uh, that's a fluid a paint so you don't have to water it down. You could just use acrylic paint and water it down too. That's you know I just happen to have that high, fly, high flow stuff so I use it. Uh, then I decided that, that the white was just too white. Um, I didn't want it dark but I wanted it less white. So I came back in with my Marabou Art Sprays again. Those are the sprays that dry permanently so you don't have to worry about them smearing. So then I was ready to work on my fish to collage over the top. I decided to do some paper piecing type collage and if you if you look at the symbol for Pisces it has almost the yin-yang look to it. Um, it's got two fish that are kind of uh, the, the C shapes are facing each other, uh, if you know what I mean. So I decided to draw something like that, but of course this, this isn't a square page, so it's not going to be exactly like that because I would need more room. It's a long skinny page 
because of the nature of the art journal. And by the way, if you want to learn how I made that art journal, the link to the video, it's it was from our other channel, our live channel. So the link to the video is in the description box below, as, long, as well as links to all the materials that I'm using on the page. Um, if you want to find those, you can go and click on those links. They're hyperlinks, so you just click on them and it goes to the thing. So I used, because I was thinking about the yin and the yang, I used black lightweight paper for one fish and white lightweight paper for the other fish, thinking that I wanted one to be darker than, than the other. And um, that was what I was thinking at the time. It didn't turn out exactly as I was thinking, sort of. <laughs> So then I start the paper piecing, and this is a piece of scrapbook paper that has this uh, fin pattern to me. It looks like fins, or I mean not fins, but scales. It looks like scales to me on there. So I decided to use a piece of that. It has arrows on the other side. It's double-sided scrapbook paper. Uh, just something I found in my pile. And I'm, you know, building up the fish in different pattern papers. Most of the paper that I used is uh, pieces that I found of gel printed paper that I've printed in the past. I found them in my room the other day. I don't know what they what they were doing or when I printed them, but they were there. Um, this one is actually a piece of tissue paper, like a wrapping tissue paper that someone gave me in Happy Mail. Um, I decide that this paper that I drew on is just text weight paper. It's light enough that I could just uh, piece right on top of it. But then later I end up kind of cutting my, my pieces apart and doing more of paper piecing that way than, um, than gluing right on top of the paper. Sometimes I do that. Usually I use a really lightweight paper. I use deli paper, which is super lightweight, um, almost a tissue paper, but more sturdy. I like this rainbow plaid. Um, it's a fun paper. I really like it. And I had a, just a scrap of it laying on the ground because I used it for some other project. Can't remember when, but it was probably during this journal process. Everything runs together when I'm doing this because I'm doing it every day and it's intense. And, you know, it's, it's just this constant trying to get to the next thing, push, push, push. And so I don't always remember exactly what I did. When we flip, when we do the flip through at the end, I'll remember, oh yeah. That's what I did. <laughs> I don't have time to flip through right now. It's just, it's crazy how much time and effort making a page and a video, editing a video every single day, how much time that takes. Um, amazingly large amount of time. So it's crazy. Next month I will be doing a lot less videos. <laughs> So then I kind of lay my pattern piece. I, I end up cutting the face and the tail off of the fish and then um, kind of laying everything out to make sure it fits and then sticking this down using some gel matte medium. Why did I use the gel? Uh, these pieces are pretty thick and heavy and I want to make sure that I get it stuck down well. I, I the gel on both the back of the piece as well as the page to really get them to stick. Then um, I had a little gap right there that I had to fix. When I cut the piece apart, I didn't cut it right in the right place. And so I just took some more of that paper and fixed it. And then I trimmed off the edge after that. So this fish has a chunk out of him. <laughs> but Hey, that's what happens <laughs> when you have two different size pages. It's kind of strange. So then I can continue to paper piece. I've got to make his face, head, whatever. I guess they're she's. I don't know. Are they she's or he's? I don't know. I don't really know. Maybe one's a he and one's a she. Um, there's the face with a different gel print. These are not complex gel prints. In fact, they might even have been cleanups. I'm not sure. They were just in a stack um, as I was continuing to go through stuff in that other room, still trying to get everything moved to the new room. I got to clean out that other room so that 
at Christmas and Thanksgiving time, people will have somewhere to stay <laughs> when they come to visit. <laughs> the room is, uh, those rooms are all filled with my junk. So I got to, you know, work on that. You know how it is. It's crazy like that. So then there's the tail or the, the fins on the end of the tail or whatever. Are these realistic fish? Absolutely not. 100% whimsical. I'm not sure there's any fish who have that long of a body or who can curve like that. I don't know. But they, you know they're fish when you look at them, even though they might not be um, accurate, 100% <laughs> accurate. So then that guy needs a fin. I realized later that I had made a more substantial fin, but it's too late. I already put that one on, so whatever. So then I'm moving on to my darker fish, and I have some gel prints that were printed on black paper at some point um, using a 6x6 six six, uh, gel plate and some metallic paints. But the because I'm using matte medium and going over these to seal everything up with matte medium, they will not end up being metallic-y at the end. They're quite um, matted out, but it, that also has the effect of bringing out the colors. Um, when you take away the glare on that that uh, shimmery paint, I think it's PBO paint, then the colors of the paint actually show up more. So it uh, ends up being pretty cool. I wasn't worried about making it matte. That was fine because the other paper was matte. So I just wanted the pattern. So then I'm positioning this fish to make sure that he fits on there sticking down the body part again trying to make sure that the glue is on the front and the back of the paper I mean yeah the front and the back but also underneath the paper underneath the paper on the back and then sealing it down with the, the glue over the top so it's nice and stuck on there <clears throat> I, I the reason I'm doing that is because I know I'm going to shade around it and I want to make sure everything's really well stuck down and collaged on there. So then I end up making the face out of a lighter paper. Had I really thought about it, I would have made it out of darker paper because then that would have kept this this fish on the left much more dark and the fish on the the right much more light. So that's that's when I didn't. Um, I was just looking at the time. I was looking at the opposite pattern because if you if you look the black paper has the positive of the stencil and the white paper has the negative of the stencil so what I had done was just flip the stencil over to clean it off on the light piece of paper so I was looking at that effect between the two or that you know the contrast between the two um, opposite patterns and wasn't really thinking about the color and had I thought about the color I would have made his that face on that fish much darker and I still could have you know I still even now, if I wanted to, could go and make it darker, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and then I put some fins um, on this fish to complete the paper piecing portion of this event. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Paper piecing portion, paper piecing portion, paper piecing portion. Yeah. <laughs> So the fish are somewhat in a yin-yang shape, not exactly, it's a lot more stretched out because of the, the long, narrow page. So then once this is good and dry, I start in with my different pens. I'm just going to finish it all off with pens. I'm using two different types of pens. One of them is the Pitt Artist Brush Pens. The only one I end up using is this navy blue color, like a dark navy blue. And these are made of India ink, which is a permanent ink once it's dry. But because this whole thing has been sealed up with, with matte medium and with acrylic paint, it's all sealed. There's no absorbency to this paper at this point. I can use this and then it gives me a little bit of time to to soften the edges with my finger so I can blend it out with my finger so it's really great for shading and that's the reason that I use that pen 
then the other pins that I end up using are Posca pins. And the reason that I use them is because they are opaque over anything. So um, as I'm coloring or drawing on top of my printed papers, you can't see the pattern from underneath because they're completely opaque. So they are acrylic paint pen, non-stinky though. Um, oil paint pens might seem like a good idea until you smell them and then you're like, yuck, just yuck. <laughs> so I alternate back and forth until I'm happy with the shading around the fishes and then I move on to the Posca pens. Trying to add some interesting eyes. I made the, the eyes look pretty human-like. Fish's eyes don't actually look like that, but these are whimsical fish. They're not realistic, so it doesn't matter. I add <clears throat> just, I was going to do, do a whole bunch of doodling lines, like kind of like Zentangle, but I was running out of time. I need to move on to the next thing, so <laughs> I didn't end up doing that. It would have been fun to uh, really do a lot of doodling over all these patterns and really bring out the patterns and shapes of the papers that I used with the pins. Um, that will be for another time when I have a whole lot of time and I'm not concerned about making the next page and making the next page and making the next video and editing and worrying about other things and this and that and I've got this other thing I have to do and I have this other thing I have to do. You know, I'm, I'm uh, feeling a little bit of pressure. So Zen tangling doodling was not going to be in the cards today. I decided on the white fish or lighter fish that I would go around the edges with a white Posca pen, um, adding more illustrative lines. I just, I just wanted to. I did all that shading and then I went back and did light, white lines. I don't know. I wanted to. <laughs> It's my fish and I can do that if I want to. <laughs> and then I work some more on the eyes and then I start uh, thinking about what I'm going to do on the rest of the page. And I decide that I'm going to go look on Pinterest for some different words about Pisces. Um, this first one is this thing. It says why everyone wants to be a Pisces. Pisces creativity and imagination go unmatched. For they are constantly inspired by the simple things in life. They find beauty in the most unexpected places and can grasp abstract concepts very easily. Thinking out of the box is their special speciality. Um, I think that describes me pretty well. Which is strange. Because when I was born and under what sign doesn't seem like it should say anything about my personality. But that's, that's how come I think zodiacs are kind of interesting. The other one was just uh, basic words. Um, em empathic, idealistic, devoted, sensitive, friendly, uh, unselfish, charitable, imaginative, musical. You know, I'm sure there's also unflattering words about Pisces and in any zodiac. I mean, there's... I just chose to write the positive things. <laughs> so then um, I decide that since I did the white Posca around the lines of the lighter colored fish that I would do the black Posca around the lines of the darker colored fish to make them kind of match or whatever. And then I find some more words. I think there was one other thing that uh, there was three things that I looked at on Pinterest that I used words from. The other one said, uh, Pisces are honest and selfish, trustworthy. Their imagination power has the capacity to take them to great heights. Extremely intuitive, sensitive souls. If you were born between, I think it's February 19th and March 20th, and you're a Pisces, leave me a comment below telling me if you agree with what they say. <laughs> um, is your personality anything like that? Um, that would be interesting to me. Even if you're not, if you're just interested in the Zodiac and you, you think that, that that makes sense and you want to leave me a comment about it, awesome. So I went ahead and put these uh, silver sticky letters on and then I was done. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.